Hi guys, Paul from International Scale Modeler. Video today on how to use Ultimate Weathering Washers. A um, bit of confusion out there how to use our washers, so I'm going to do a video showing it used on AFV, uh, aircraft, uh, tank tracks, track wheels, etc. So it'll give you an idea on how to use them properly. Uh, available in six colours, you've got light dirt, dark dirt, rust, sand, mud and concrete. Um, all bar the dark dirt, I would say are ideally focus towards AFV. Um, these five, the light dirt, rust, sand, mud and concrete, all drive a dusty effect, which as AFV models all know, you know, that's the ideal way you know you're looking for most of the time by using pigments and washes and what have you. Uh, whereas the dark dirt is primarily uh, focused towards aircraft. So like so this red arrow, the panel lines you can see there, the dark dirt will set in there, dry and really accentuate them. Might not be the best colour for a red aircraft, but I'm going to use this as a test subject because you'll really see the effect in there. Um, so that's what we've got. They're the six colours. Um, these were given out to testers to test, obviously, and we've listened to their input and we have changed a few things. Originally, there was a problem with the dark dirt, it was drying a little bit lighter than it should have, going a bit grey rather than being a nice deep dark colour it should have been. So we listened to that and we changed the formula in that. Um, we also listened about the sand. People saying the sand was a little bit too orangey yellowy so we changed it to a more blonde colour as such and it's a much better sand colour. You can tell the difference between the Mark 1 and Mark 2 sand by the rear one's got, the new one's got a sticker on the back, the old one hasn't. But ideally for me is <laughs> I've got two shades of sand now so it's a plus for me to have that so if you can get the old one and the new one you've got a bonus there because you've got two different colours. Uh, the mud was drying a little bit too light so we removed a bit of the compound that makes it go dusty. It's virtually the same tone as you look it's a little bit darker but this dries with a much more muddy effect um, looks a lot more realistic again tell by the difference by the sticker on the back to in the new shade but again the old shade still perfectly usable and you can layer it up with this to make you know two different colors as such so if you've got the old and the new one you're onto the bonus um, concrete again listen to our testers I said our concrete was a little bit too light so we darken it up if you look at the top there you can see the two different tones so again there you go Again, same difference, sticker on the back indicates a newer wash, but again, you know, it's, it's still usable colour, nothing wrong with the colour at all, it works perfectly. Just we listen to our testers and input off various people, and we just tweak the colours a little bit, not a drastic change, um, as you can see it's only a, a shade darker, but like I say, for me the benefit is I've got extra washes, <laughs> just never a, a bad thing in armour modelling at all. So, what we've got to test them on, is I've got an old Tamiya King Tiger I made about 10 years ago. I then stripped down and rebuilt it, uh, resprayed it about two years ago. And this is going to be our test subject today. It's been gloss coated, that's why it's so shiny. Uh, we've also got one well, of the very first aircraft kits I made getting back into this hobby. It's an Airfix 172 Red Arrow. Absolute, I made an absolute shocking job of it. Um, definitely not one of my best. I even went over the canopy with Matt Varnish, as you do learning so yeah that's our test subject for the panel lines on the aircraft uh, i've also got a set of rubber band traps off tamiya's tyran 5 which i've replaced with metal ones so that's not a problem i've half primed i haven't done the whole thing primed half it sprayed it in uh, like a, an off black color gray color and then dry brushed it in silver not not to show any effect just to give it a bit of depth detail for when we weather it up and we've got a front sprocket and a road wheel off a King Tiger as well. So these have been sprayed in two-tone camo and given a bit of dry brushing just to give it a bit of depth and interest. So there are test subjects. So the reason for glossing them. If you gloss your model, that's going to make it a lot easier to get the wash off once it's dry because obviously it's on a glossy surface. So you're going to get most of it off and it's going to leave it in all the little gaps and panel lines where you can't get to with a tissue or a cotton bud, Q-tip, etc. So that's the idea for gloss coating it. Same for the aircraft, because the only place I want the wash on this aircraft, if we go to overhead, is literally in all those panel lines and all those gaps. I don't want over the entire aircraft. I just wanted to show those off. That's it. Um, if you wanted to create a more worn effect, um, you could matte coat this. And what that does, it gives the wash somewhere to grip, but also in turn makes it harder to get off. So you need to think ahead what kind of weathering effect you want. 
if you just want to accentuate colours or lines, you know, or you know, recesses, gaps, then give it a gloss coat. If you want to just spray it on and give an unbelievably worn effect, then leave it matte. For me, I think the gloss coat is the best because you can still leave it on. You can work around it, as you'll see in a bit. So for me, that's the best way of doing it by far. Gloss coated, all I've used there is um, Johnson's Clear, but you can use any of the clear coats out there. Uh, obviously test them on a subject first because I know pe certain people have certain problems with different clear coats, so we can't guarantee that, you know, you're not gonna have a problem with that particular clear coat on your model. But for me, I know with clear, Johnson's Clear, it works fine. And that's what I use all the time for it. So in use, you need a brush, nice flat brush. Try and use a brush that you're just gonna use on the wash. So I bought AK's brushes because they're bright orange for all my weathering. And I know this brush is used for the washes because of the shape, it's the only one in there. Never dip your brush into the bottle. Which one should we start with? We'll start with a light dirt. Don't dip your brush in the bottle to get the, the wash out because if there's anything on that brush, be it a bit of thinner, or you know cellulose then anything that's not in this wash it can contaminate the wash and it won't work as it should so always use a clean brush that you cleaned off or you know has only been used for the wash and decant a little bit of the wash into a cup over time if I can turn it you'll see there that the wash is separate they do this over time quick shake mixes it all back up perfectly for you so you need to keep this in mind when you're applying it to your model a put in the cup is ideal because you can literally give it a swirl around rather than have to shake that entire bottle. Now to shake them, make sure the lid's on nice and tight otherwise it'll start to go everywhere. I like to give it a good shake by hand and then I also like to just give it a tap on the palm of my hand to remove any other stubborn bits in there. Lid off, think about what you want to, how much you think you're going to use and just pour a bit in. So in there we've got about four mil, we've got about five mil in there. And most importantly, when you have finished, don't pour it back in the bottle. Because like I say, if there's a contaminant on there and it gets in the wash, it'll cause problems with your wash, which in turn, you know, it'll ruin your entire wash basically. So always decant it. You put in there what you think you're gonna use for that day and then throw the rest away. So what we're gonna do, we'll take that turret off. Now, this isn't my guide to showing how to weather vehicles, because um, that'd be quite in depth. This is just to show you how the wash works. So all I'm gonna do, we've got a light dirt wash. The overhead cam, so make sure you agitate it. Plenty on the brush. And we're just gonna give it a good, good stare. And a good brush all along those side skirts. And we're gonna let it pool and collect everywhere we can. Spill it a little bit there. And we'll just let it collect. And as you can see on the overhead, a little bit too much there actually. So the beauty of this is, if you're not happy with what you've done, you can rinse it under a tap or use a wet cloth, take it off completely, start again. So that is the beauty of this wash. So all we're gonna do for today on this, is we're gonna apply it on the side skirt. We'll let it dry and we'll see the effect that gives. So I'm gonna put it right up the sides and what I'm looking for is to show, you know, it's been in a sandy terrain or a dusty terrain and this will leave behind a nice dusty effect. So there's that done, we'll put that to one side there. Like I say, non-toxic, totally safe, clean up's nice and easy as you can see, there's my workbench nice and spotless. You can mix all the colours together to make whatever colour you want to. So if you've got the rust, and you want to darken it up a little bit, you can add a bit of the dark dirt or the mud to give a different turn. So you can mix them all together. Totally non-toxic, safe. Um, they don't taste very nice, I'll tell you that right now. Um, I said I would advise drinking them. But they are safe, they're non-toxic, all natural products. Uh, so that one's going to be left to dry. That'll take probably, it's quite a thick coat, so that's going to take quite a while to dry. Probably at least half an hour. But we'll leave that to dry to one side. Next up, we'll do the tracks, and I think for the tracks, I'll put a bit of tissue down because it's going to go through it. For the tracks, I think we'll use a bit of sand, a bit of mud. So again, a good shake, a new cup. These cups, you can get them on eBay, very, very cheap, and they're ideal for this. 
So off you go, make sure your brush is nice and clean. Plenty in, I'm going to do half in sand and half in mud. So we'll do this half in the sand effect and the front half in mud. And like I say, this isn't a guide on how to you know, weather our AFE, so don't come back saying, oh, it looks rubbish. This is just me showing you the techniques for using the wash. So you can put as little or as much on as you want. For me, we're just going to fill it totally up as much as we can. So a bit of sand at the back. And now we'll go for the mud at the front. Two ways you can use this as well. I know I said don't dip your brush in there, but if you're inclined to do that, so be it. What you can do, you can apply it this way with the liquid, or once you've shook it, you get a nice foam on the top. So you can apply the liquid really thick, like so. Or you can go back to the bottle. If I dry it off our. Then you can grab a little bit of foam. As you can see, the foam's not as thick as the liquid. So you can get a less, what's the word, intense wash in the first instance. And what that will enable you to do, once you've had one of the washes dry, if you get the foam off a different colour, you can layer that on top. So you can get two different tones on, say, the rust or sand or any of them whatsoever. Get a variation of your tones by mixing them or straight out the bottom. And you basically get any effect you wish for. So as you can see, both those washes have collected... I can get it out of there in the tracks and where you can see it they're going to dry so what we'll do once they're dry we're going to take off all the wash off the top layer and as much wash from inside those links as possible and that'll leave a nice dusty effect with the painted surface showing through and the dry brush and that should give a good start basis or end basis to your weathering on your tracks I mean like I say this isn't a guide on how to do it but if you just want to put a bit of mud in there job done you can, you can leave it in there, you don't have to take it out. All depends on the effect you're after, uh, to how far you actually go. Next up we've got a road wheel and a sprocket. Uh, we'll use... I think we'll have some concrete on this one. Not something I typically do on an AFV, dependent where it was. It's a very dusty area, then you could put a, a spatter in the, you know, the tread marks on a rubber tire and what have you, there you go, I'm breaking my own rule there, dipping the brush in. There we go. Like I say, remember, if you're not using your wash for a couple of minutes, make sure when you come back you give it a good stir, just to make sure you get all the full strength you need. So there you go. So quite thick in there, and what you can do, if you wipe your brush off or dry it off, you can go back pick it up and get you know as much out as you like so there's hardly any in there now whatsoever or you can go and wash it under a tap and completely rinse it off and start again but for today the effect that I want I want it quite thick like so so there we go that'll be left to dry as well and now the front sprocket I think for that one we'll get a little bit of the dark dirt in there just to show the effect this has on there as well. There we go. Don't need much on there because it's only a small part. So again, you know, you can mix colours, change the, the tones and what have you to as and what you like. So there we go. Just literally put it all in the sprocket details, all the um, the nuts, all the recess lines, and like I say, you can take it out, you can move it around. Just be aware that the more there is in there, the longer it's going to take to dry. So there you go. As you can see, all in those recesses and all those gaps. Perfect. Excellent. What we'll do while we've got that off. 
get a little bit more. And we'll get ready for the red arrow. So there we go. So like I say, AFE we want to give dusty effects, so we're just chucking it all over it. And we're going to leave it, you know, in all the areas where you know it collects around recesses on aircraft. Literally, all you want to do is get it in those panel lines. Uh, you could sit there with a brush and you know pin wash it all in, but the easiest way of doing it is just slap it all on like so. And you'll put this all over your model. Everywhere you can get it. Like so. And all you need to do is put it somewhere upright, let it dry. Once it's dry, we'll show you what we do when we come back. So I'm going to let these to dry. We'll come back once they are dry and I'll show you get them off and what effects we're left with. Right, okay, while all those parts are drying and the other part side of this tank's drying, we're going to airbrush a little bit of the light there to show how to airbrush it. So as you can see, that side's been brush painted with it and it's starting to dry now. So we're going to brush airbrush this side. And all we're going to do is just going to give it a light even coat. We're not trying to paint anything because it's not paint. We're just give it a light even coat of the wash. It's going to apply in a slightly different way to the way the brush does because it'll be a little bit more subtle because it's being blasted by air. Pressure wise on the airbrush we're at 20 psi. Just get the pressure down a little bit. There we go. I'm using my I want a Neo with a 0.35 needle in it if I remember right. So always make sure you give your wash a real good stir or shake and pop some in to there. Test on a bit of paper fair, as you can see it comes out just like paint. I don't know how thin we can get it, but that's the way it comes out. So we're gonna put the extractor on. So because you blast it with air, it is going to separate a lot more. So it's a little bit of trial and error what you're doing. So if you get a base coat of it down, as you can see it's cutting in all the uppermost parts, down the edges, you get more where you want to be on the brush. So you can literally direct it where you want the airbrush. It sprays through perfectly fine. Uh, high quality, you know, ingredients and all washes. Due to the airbrushes now, once you spray it, obviously it's still in there. You can then use the air to manipulate the wash where you want it. So as you can see, we're just on this segment here. We move a bit away, or we can come back with it. Place it exactly where we want. We can get rid of it totally. So clear probably 90% of it out from there, or we can go back the other way and put it back. It's quite versatile for the airbrush. Maybe you can get it almost exactly where you want it. So as you can see, it's not as plastered on there as it is that side. It's quite thicker than you see where it's wet with the brush. Is this side's a bit more deliberate where we want it. We've literally got it in all the, all the seams, in the side skirts, the joining plates, uh, it's connected around the nuts and there, the bolts rather, uh, and it's connected on the bottom. Like I say, we can manipulate it round all the way, we can put it up, down, yeah, everywhere you want with the airbrush. Really simple, really easy. Again, it gives a different effect. If you're looking for a lighter, more purposeful wash, then you can airbrush it on. Or we're just going to do all over and then remove it all and brush it off like that side. There you go, airbrush is perfectly, sprays through real nice. Again, it is non toxic, but with any airborne particles, don't breathe them in, regardless of what they are. Never ever breathe airborne particles in. Clean up, I would personally use a bit of water uh, to clean this up, just to rinse through. Um, So pop the brush in, give it a good swirl around, I'm going to do a normal trick of back in. Tip it away and spray out your remnants in there. Obviously before you come to use paint again, 
make sure you give your airbrush a good clean just to make sure there's no particles or wash still in there but it cleans up easier than paint just with two little squares through some airbrush cleaner a bit of tissue wipe over the front wipe over the inside there we go if you look right down there I can get a bit of light to catch, there you go. You can see my airbrush, absolutely spotless. So, airbrush is perfectly, comes out your airbrush fine, but obviously, as with everything, always test it on something before you commit to a model, um, just to make sure you get the effect you want, and what have you, but you can already see where this is starting to dry there. Uh, I assume, I haven't tried actually, that if you keep applying air, it's also going to aid in the drying, which it actually is. So as you can see, there you go. That's drying there really nice and quick. On the front skirt, you can see that colour actually starting to form right there. So as you can see, using the airbrush is quite versatile way of doing it, and you are left with that the finish. Very similar to the other side, but a bit more purposeful the other side. Okay, we we're starting to dry on the other side as well. So, yeah, airbrush, very versatile. You can use it to dry it off. I've never done this before. It's the first time I tried drying it off, if I'm honest. I have to say it works damn good. So there we go. We'll put this with the others. We'll let them dry. We'll come back and we'll show about removing them. Right, it's been approximately 45 minutes since we did the washes. Uh, the all very nearly dried, the only one that's not dry quite is the sand, just in the middle, it's just still drying, but for the purpose of this it just needs to be bone dry. Uh, if we go through the various colours uh, and see the textures are left behind, uh, we'll then go to removing them as well. So on the tracks, we've got sand on the left and mud on the right, so as you can see, they're dried nicely, mud's a nice tone, sand's a nice vibrant sand colour, so they're fine. We've got the road wheel which we put concrete on, you know, I didn't put this on very thick, you see me remove most of it, I put a little bit back, um, you can see where it's collected in and around the edges, all around the nuts and what have you. Then we've got the sprocket, which we put the dark dirt on, uh, this has worked very well, nice effect, so it's like a pin wash almost, but very, very quick, so as you can see, where I dry brush some metal left worn effects to the edge, where the wash is dried on it, adds a real nice effect, um, as to all around the centres where the wash is dried so that's a real nice quick effect for your sprockets and what have you and you could do the same on your road wheels the red arrow the dark dirt's dried nicely on the wing so that's ready to come off not a problem at all and on the tank quite interesting results we've got the side we airbrushed sorry about the thing this is where I picked the tank up unfortunately we've got the um, side we airbrushed so it's dried nice, dried really, really quick. That was dry within five minutes, obviously because it's a lighter coat. Um, so you can see where that gives a real dust effect. You can see where we've got overspray at the top, so it adds another nice touch. And also on the front gun as well. Now the side we brush painted, you can see the other effect, where it's gone on a hell of a lot thicker. Sorry about this, again, to where my hands have been. Um, and gives a totally different effect to the side. So, like I said, when we were brushing, you get two different effects. It's a lot lighter there, so if you wanted to spray it on and leave it, that's the way to do it. If you're going to put it on, you really want a heavy weathered look, that's the way to do that one. So, what we'll do, we'll do the tracks first. If I get that bit of tissue again, pop that down there. So, to remove it, a couple of water, just normal tap water, some kitchen roll, and this is how I do it. On tracks so obviously you've got all the detail inside but obviously you've also got the painted detail on top which has got the dry brushing on so for me I'd run it over the top make sure you cloth isn't too damp like I've just done just run it all over the top and all we're doing is removing that top layer off where we dry brushed it obviously because the nature of the tracks we do get bits coming off. So as you can see now, just by doing that, you can see the glint in the center of the track. So I think the dry brushes come back through. So again, you could leave it like that if you washed, if you washed, 
<laughs> pardon me. You can leave that if you wanted. Um, and you know, the muddy effect on the front, sand effect on the back, it's a bit OTT on the sand, the mud you could get away with. Um, but to be honest, you'd never had it in that thick, the way I did it anyway. So to get that out, cotton buds in the water again. And we're just going to simply get in there as much as we can and get as much out as possible. That's the key to this. If you just want an effect, you really do need to get out as much as possible. And I'm not going to do the whole track because we'll be here all day. So I'm just going to remove a few sections of the back just so we can see the effect left behind by getting a lot of it out it's going to give a much more subtle effect there we go and if we just give it a wipe and a damp down so there you go so as you can see you've got the part we just literally wiped off and then the part we've got a cotton board right in and removed as much as possible so that gives a a lot more realistic effect as you can see I've got right in there and only just a bit in there so it is down to you just how much you want to you weather them obviously it's your choice in the day again if you wanted to get a more you get a you know toothpick in there a cocktail stick and get even more out and leave a real subtle part behind same on the mud if you just want to get in getting cotton buds right in there I've just literally done that one link there, you can see it just there. You can leave behind a lot more subtle effects. So it really is very usual. You've got, you know, really where I consider OTT. It's a real subtle, you could get more of that off, you know, the mud, very warm muddy effect to a less muddy effect. You know, this one's been off-road, this one's been off-road, but has been on road for quite some time. Okay. On the road wheel, we lightly weathered this one. So two ways we can do this, you can leave it as it is and leave a very dusty road wheel. If it was me and I was going to leave that, any excess on there, I'd remove with a finger. So as you can see, just on this upper edge, I'd take that off and just lightly rub all around. And that leaves a nice effect inside. Again, you can get the cotton bud, moisten it. Get it right in there and try and get out as much as possible without pressing too hard. What that's then going to do, if we quickly dry it, that's then going to leave all the nuts, the raised detail, the sunken detail with all the little bits of concrete in. And that gives a very, very subtle effect. Quite hard to see there because it's a, a light colour on quite light colours. But it is there, and as you see, you know, like I say, it's entirely up to you just how much you want the weathering to show through. Now, on the likes of this, that looks really good as is. Again, I'd use my finger, and I'd take that wash off all the raised parts. Just with a finger, as you can see, there you go, you get the, the brown on your finger. What that then does, that allows all the dry brushing to show through. It gives that real nice weathered effect now. So you've got the, the brightness of the dry brushing with the weathered wash look of the actual wash itself. Again, you can get a cloth in there, take a lot off. It really is down to you just how much you want to do. Very, very versatile weathering wash. And there we go. So literally, rather than looking out of a pin wash, then pigments, uh, a weathering, you know, different type of oil washes, uh, all sorts. This is just a one, one step. And to me, it probably needs, I'd, I would have left a little bit more on the sprocket teeth to give it a little bit more worn effect, but you can put more on, you can take off, you just reactivate the wash again by getting it wet and it'll take it all back off again. So, like I keep saying, it, it is down to you how much you want to do, but to me, that's a fantastic effect just from applying the wash, leaving it for half an hour coming back instantly done so as that one rolls away quite handily now aircraft I'm gonna grab a fresh bit of tissue the idea of this wash we don't want this all over the model you might do depending on the model you're doing aircraft but for me all I'd want 
is it in those panel lines? So, motion tissue, wipe it over, you can see just how easy it comes off. Really, really easy. That's the idea of the gloss, you see. If that was matte, that wouldn't come off anywhere near as easy and you'd have a lot more worn effect. Just get right into that corner. There we go. Quite hard to see because it's a glossy aircraft and it just reflects. But you can see there, it's all collected in all the panel lines. All nicely in there was the other side. There's nothing at all. So again, you can use any of the colours on there you wanted, uh, but the most go-to colour is this type of colour. This is one I use 90% of the time. Depends on the colour of the aircraft. Um, for this, it's probably a little bit OTT for red. I'd probably use more of the lighter colours, uh, but it gives a good effect. It's quite hard for to see that it's not showing on my monitor. It's because it's gloss. The contrast keeps losing it. But it is there. And it has worked very, very well. Um, so it adds good contrast, depth and interest to the model. Which in turn makes it look more realistic. Shows off the panel lines and what have you a lot better. So there's aircraft. Move over to actual armour again. We get the same bit of tissue. So again, you could leave it as is with that side. That's you know real, real dusty. This thing's been out in I don't know, the desert or, you know, dusty tracks for a long long time or you can come in with the cloth give it a bit of a damp um, what we'll do, we'll leave the back sections on and we'll just remove the front bit onwards so another way you can do it is you can use your finger again and just start to rub it off so as you can see you're leaving it in all those colours, you can drag it down with your finger you can just lightly rub it to give an effect that you know it is dusty but it's been rubbed off in places collected on the top etc that does give a nice effect so as you can see all the corners all the folds where everything would naturally collect it has collected so nice effect, or you can come in with your cloth and literally completely remove it, which will do from the front onwards. So again, you're trying to get out as much as possible and just leave remnants in there. And again, how much or how little you want to remove is entirely down to you. We've got quite a lot off the front there. But as you can see, you can leave it in stages up at the top where it's collected in corners, going back to where we just removed it with the fingers. So right at the back where we've completely left it as is. So very very versatile. And as you see where I've taken it off, I get rid of good, a real good wipe to get everything off. You're completely back to your base colour you started with. So if you're doing it, you're not happy, you can take it off, start again, or you know you've got various tones where we're taking a lot off, not so much, hardly you know, we removed it with a finger and so we haven't taken any off whatsoever. So very, very versatile through the airbrush. The other side is a lot, lot thicker. So this is going to give a lot more different effects. So because it's gone on thicker, it's also quite hard to get off because there's a lot more substance on there. So you can start to leave a little bit more 3D effects because it started to clump. So again, using your finger, you can just get it in there. Add all sorts of different effects. So as you see, we've got quite a bit there. Obviously, this is, might not be the correct colour. I'm just showing you how the wash works. So again, right to the front, where we can get it all completely off. And if we so wish, we could start completely from scratch. So very, very versatile, very, very useful, and very, very fast. Uh, one thing I did notice off camera was waiting for it to dry. This side was dried ridiculously quick, really really fast, probably 10 minutes. This side did take probably half an hour at least to dry. So it does show the different ways you can do it for quickness. Uh, and as you can see, airbrushing it has taken it up the back here, onto the tow cables, 
And again, just by running your finger over or brush, you can add some real nice effect. You see it's all in the toke over lines. So the, the idea of taking it off is that you leave it in the recesses. And that's what gives it the visual effect. Um, to me, it doesn't look as good like this. It does need some removing to give it a a good effect because you know dirt and dust does collect naturally in corners so you go like that so you know the thing of the wind or whatever the direction of travel it does naturally collect in corners and what have you and that to me gives a good effect but like I say you get the full option from taking it all off to less less sorry taking it all off to leaving some on a little bit more on a lot more on to leaving it untouched so it's, it's a good scale down the way you can do it and like I say you're not happy with it get a brush on it, I don't know if the brush is dry kind of is get that wet and it'll take everything off completely and you can start again so very very versatile that's how I use the washers and that's uh, how we design the washers to be used um, if I get everything back in again you can see all the different effects so hopefully that helps some people using the wash see the different effects that you can achieve uh, weather and wise and obviously it's a lot quicker way of doing it than some of the older techniques um, and gives the same effect so hope that's pretty useful for you if you have any questions at all please uh, comment on the video or you know send myself and Lee uh, uh, ultimate some uh, messages sorry about the drilling having some work done in the house as well <laughs> perfect time at the end of my video uh, so if you have any questions don't be, you know be afraid to ask us we'll always try and answer them and uh, we'll see you soon so take care thanks for watching